from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields, and keeping the watch night, the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come by the most powerful means of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Today I have a couple of gifts for you. First of all, it's going to be a short homily because I started to get a cold. You can probably hear it in my voice. It's a little shorter homily than normal. And second of all, a gift, I'm not going to give you my cold, but I'm going to refrain from giving the Eucharist today, so Deacon and uh, Austin will be giving the Eucharist out today, so I freed you from the cold, um, so that's my second gift today. The beautiful thing about Christmas is the aspect of God's humility, and when we see that humility as the creator of the world showing up as a child. And not just a child, but a poor, destitute child. They couldn't even find a hotel room or a motel room or a room at the end. There must have been a Packer game in <laughs> Bethlehem that day. But the point of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, showing up to the world Illuminated by a star, the wise men see it, they realize it, and they come and find this child. But in an earthly matter, in an earthly kingship, there was none of that. There was no scrapping for, in a sense, a castle or fine linen, linens or clothing. But that was not God's pursuit in this case. And then you forward into Jesus' life, and it was a life of labor with St. Joseph, of teaching a skilled tradesman as a carpenter, a life of poverty, 
knowing that he was who he was because he had the ability to heal, to heal the blind, the lame, the deaf, to raise up the dead, to walk on water, to call fire from heaven. But he didn't choose to do that. He chose to die on a cross. He humbled himself to die on a cross. He could have smited anyone, Pilate, the soldiers. He could have used his power for himself, but he did not. He used his power and his kingship and his love and his grace and his gifts for you. So that you could be reconciled to the Father. The reason he was humble, because he was being obedient to his Father, because his Father had a plan to save you, to save me. And could he have done all those things like we see politicians and celebrities? For God did not have Facebook to promote himself. He did not have TikTok, Snapchat. He didn't have Instagram. He didn't have all of this to try to become a star in the world. He had his love. And what he did is he loved to the greatest component, the greatest ability that he could to heal, to make whole, and to reconcile you to the Father. See, this is the great gift of Christmas, is God's humility. This is the great gift of Christmas because we have an opportunity to learn that humility, that love, that peace, and that joy. If we take it upon ourselves and follow in the path of our Lord, that we too can be reconciled with the Father. We too can be used in that love, that joy, and that peace to bring that to the world. Not all of this crap that we have in the world today. Not this division and confusion and separation and anger. Not all of this stuff that we've been dealing with for four years now, but what we can share is that love that Christ showed us in his own life. The humility that he showed us in his own life. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we have an opportunity to step into that love, for God has gifts graces, talents for you tonight. And he has some crosses. Because we cannot escape the cross, but we have to accept all those things in humility. And in that, he restores us to our inheritance through that baptismal font. Because our baptism brings us into his family and our willingness and our love back to him brings us into completion and into everlasting life. Our humility is the path to that. So how do we be humble in front of God? Where's the how? Where's the rub of the how? We be humble to God. We bow down to God. We accept him. In all his kingship, and all his humility, and all his love, we accept him. What does it cost you to do that? Only your pride. But the greatest gift that Our Lady has ever been given is that very humility. It thwarts the pride of Satan. See, Christ defeated Satan on the cross because of his humility, because of his obedience, because he couldn't beat that. And how you defeat Satan in your life, 
how you defeat the sin and the struggle in your life is your humility and bowing down to God and asking God for his help. Know that you can't defeat him yourself. That's humility. And when we accept that, and we receive that, and we thank God for that, that's the start of our relationship. That's the start of discipleship. And that's how we learn how to be Christian in the fullest sense of the word. That God is in control, not us. So from the crush crib to the cross, Christ was nothing but humble. And that's what defeated the enemy, the prince of this world who reigns today. And it's by your humility in God how you will defeat him in your lives. Let us pray.